So when you look at the industrial, uh, uh, industrial sector, uh, I break it down into two groups. You've got your domestic industrials, uh, and we talked about some of the issues there with, around some of the challenges uh, that are coming into those in industrial uh, industries. Uh, and then you've got your internationally competitive companies that are competing on the international stage. Uh, now, in the main, those companies are competitive and, and they have uh, growth opportunities ahead of them to grow their business internationally. Uh, and, uh, but at the moment, you know, investors really haven't distinguished much between the two. Uh, the domestic industrials are typically are more mature and paying high dividends, uh, and, and the market is rewarding them for that in this in low income, low, low, uh, low yielding environment. Uh, and so, you know, there's not a lot of difference between the rating of those domestic industrials that are paying high dividends and some of the international companies uh, that, um, that, uh, that are uh, growing very quickly. Uh, I think I, um, as uh, some of these trends play out that we're concerned about, uh, where uh, we are seeing some real headwinds for these domestic industrials, not just the economy, but some of the uh, competitive challenges that are coming through. I think you'll see, you know, um, uh, more of a divergence in the rating of those international companies that are doing well and growing, and those domestic uh, industrials that are paying high yields, but I think will increasingly struggle going forward. And so what's an example of a, a company mm. that's doing well overseas? Well, I mean, we can invest in, in the med tech area internationally. Uh, you know, some of these medical device companies uh, are, are, you know, uh, uh, the PE ratios are kind of 15 to 20 times. Uh, they're growing consistently at 10% plus plus, uh, and, you know, really growing with their sector. Uh, even in biotech, you know, companies like Biogen, I think it's on 25 times something like that, and, and gr growing consistently every year at 15%. Uh, and then you've got Amcor. Uh, if you actually look at the underlying growth of Amcor's business before acquisitions, the organic growth is, 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 is 1% to 2% or less. That's actually been generous. Uh, and you know, the company's on a similar multiple, 20 times. So you've got Amcor where the organic growth is zero. Uh, or you've got Biogen at 20 times. Or you've got Biogen, you know, 25 times. It's grown at 15% plus, you know, for as as long as you can remember. So, you know, it's just interesting what you're paying for growth and what you're paying for income. Uh, and I, I just think now what we'll see is we'll see, you know, a, a clearer divergence between those two. You know, the sell-off we've seen in the bond markets recently, I, I think, you know, could be the beginning of that. Uh, and uh, that's the reason why our share market, I think, has struggled in recent weeks, because we are a very mature market. There are a lot of bond proxies in our share market, uh, and a lot of those names really got sold off in recent weeks. Well, largely valuation, we still think the market is very expensive. Uh, and then you have to look at the sectors. Uh, you know, we think uh, the uh, mining companies are in a bear market, uh, for as far as you can see. But there will be, you know, there'll be, there'll be you know, counter-cyclical rallies, and, and you want to get on board, because they, they will be sharp and uh, there'll be money to be made there. But in the medium to longer term, you know, we've had the boom and we're in a bear market. So we don't think resources really are going anywhere in the medium term. The banks, uh, we think, uh, are, are going to really struggle uh, as well. They've got problems around capital, that problem's not going away. Uh, but also, if you look at the last, uh, uh, the results in the last half, as a group, uh, there was no EPS growth. EPS was flat. Uh, and the capital that they need to raise will dilute earnings going forward. That's, that's quite dilutionary. Uh, between 10 and 15% EPS dilution from the 40 odd billion dollars of capital that to raise. So there, there's very little growth in the underlying businesses and then the dilution from the capital has to be raised. So that's, you know, that's well over half the market. And then you're kind of left with the balance of the industrial companies. We talked about the international industrial companies where we see some good opportunities, where there's some good growth uh, there. And then the domestic industrials, ex the banks, you know, uh, companies, sectors that we've talked about where we see some competitive challenges like general insurance, Utilities, telecom—you uh, know—we we see the competitive dynamics uh, deteriorating.